the reason we're here today is to do a ribbon cutting for the new park shop as well as the new campground. Uh, we're in the process of finishing a 28 site campground that addresses a lot of concerns that have been raised over the years about the Jim Creek site. Uh, there haven't been any campsites, uh, there is no designated area, and we've got that now. We've got 28 sites. The sites on that end are all 60 feet long and pull through. Uh, they were built to that dimension based on input we got from the public that the sites needed to be big enough for a full size pickup truck or an SUV pulling a trailer with their ATVs or four-wheel or four drives on it. Coming up next will be a, uh, a new restroom on the far end, as well as potable water source, and then some lights along, uh, along the edge of the parking lot. The park shop is sort of a, uh, uh, addresses a number of needs uh, that, um, that we felt uh, needed to be addressed over the course of the last couple years. Uh, one of the things that was identified in the Jim Creek Master Plan was a lack of borough presence at the Jim Creek site. And by moving our park operations from inside uh, the Palmer City limits out here, we've addressed that concern. Uh, the existing site back in Palmer uh, is right in the middle of a residential area. It's in violation of the conditional use permit that we have. And we have grown exponentially since we moved into that building in the 80s. We've added things like the Government Peak Recreation Area Chalet, Alcantara, the big investment here at Jim Creek, the acquisition of the top of the Butte, Esca Falls, and many more. And coming on deck pretty soon will be the Shelter Bay Park out on KGB Road. Much of our equipment uh, was stored in a building in, par uh, in downtown Palmer where we were paying rent. And so what we're able to do is move all of our equipment out here and have basically a one-stop shop. Jim Creek became a natural choice for us because it was already borough-owned land and saved us the cost of the investment. It's bordered by Sullivan Road, which is only a 35 mile an hour road. So as we're entering and exiting our facility, we're doing so in low speed traffic. Natural gas and electric was nearby. There's a low water table, so we saved costs on drilling wells. And it's important, again, like I say, we have six plus days of staffing out here for the 300 plus cars and uh, visitors that we have on site. We also wanted to mention we have a unique arrangement now with the state of Alaska. Um, I don't want to say it's the first time we've cooperated with the state of Alaska because they are partners with us, but uh, the Knick River Public Use Area staff is actually renting office space here in this building now. And so we're going to work together on making sure that when people come out here and recreate, they have an enjoyable experience and it becomes a great place for families to come. Good morning. I'm uh, Pat Shifley and I'm uh, representing uh, the, the biking community here. I've lived in the Palmer area over 30 years and have recreated here uh, throughout that time period. I do have a four-wheeler and snow machine and have used the trails with that method, but I'm here to speak about fat biking. And this, the area, Knick River and Knick Glacier is really a world-class class destination for fat biking in the snow and uh, um, the, the conditions can be variable but normally there's not a tremendous amount of snow here or if it does snow it, it tends to blow away a lot the fat bikes certainly don't go float on the snow so they are they do coexist well with the other forms of uh, transportation out here either snow machines or ATVs packing down the trails makes perfect trails for riding the, the, the fat bikes so uh, it's, a, it's an awesome place here. We've also, uh, uh, in the uh, last two years in December, there's a thing called Global Fat Tire Bike Day, and, uh, and the Valley group of fat bikers have organized rides from, from uh, this destination where we've ridden up the frozen Jim Creek to Jim Lake. And uh, both years we've attracted over uh, 50 to 75 riders. So uh, it is a destination and activity that people like to do around here. And I appreciate uh, over the time all their improvements and, and upgrades that have made in this area. It's a, just a tremendous asset for the Matsu Valley. Thank you. Uh, my name is Patrick Rowe. I am president of Alaska Extreme Four Wheelers. I've been a part of the off-road community in Alaska for going on 12 years and a part of the greater off-road community since I was born. I wanted to say many thanks to the borough for investing so much time, money, and effort into making one of our many play areas extremely nice to be in and around. 
over the years, the Connect Public Use Area has seen a lot of use from various user groups, from hikers, bikers, horseback riders, ATV side-by-sides, and full-size trucks and Jeeps. We have watched what used to be a littered and somewhat dangerous area morph into a clean and safe environment to play in. With on-site security, amazing campgrounds, safe parking areas, bathrooms, regular cleanups, Connect has become a very friendly to become very friendly to those who use the area. On behalf of uh, Alaska Extreme Four Wheelers and the general off-road community, I want to say thank you for helping make this area much nicer than it has ever been. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Clark Cox with the State of Alaska Department of Natural Resources, and literally everything I was going to say has already been said. But I'll take this opportunity real quick to uh, throw the thanks out one more time. Um, I've been involved in the area since the early 2000s. Um, it has come a long way, right? And that doesn't just happen because DNR has done a good job, right? I think it's a, it's a great example of what we see here today, what's happening in the parking lot, right? With all the agencies, the borough, um, the nonprofit organizations, the individuals that come out here on their own time to spend time uh, cleaning up the area, spending time doing what they enjoy on their bikes, on their horses, on their uh, ATVs, those kinds of things, is exactly what this area was created for back in, you know, 05, 06. Um, the area plan was instituted. The management from our office um, has been ever, ever increasing. Uh, we appreciate the borough letting us uh, have some space here. This was envisioned 10, 15 years ago that if there ever was a building, a facility put out here, the DNR would love to have a spot. So we're really happy to see that come together. So we're happy to be part of that as well. Um, I call this progress. To me, uh, we all knew uh, this wasn't going to happen overnight, right? Those folks that sat at those meetings, that sat in the, in the living rooms, Kenny, I'm thinking of your living room in particular, right? Um, we spent a lot of time thinking about how we'd like to change the place. It, it was no good. Everybody agreed it was terrible the way it was. And we knew we couldn't make it happen overnight, right? Progress happens over time. It, it takes time to get there. But 10, 15 years later, look where we've come. And as the previous speaker just said, it is a place that families come out, bring your kids. It's a great spot to come. The borough creates a nice facility here for access to the state lands, 260,000 acres of state lands immediately adjacent. So we're really appreciative of everybody and the borough specifically. So thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jim Sykes. I'm the current uh, District 1 representative on the Matsu Borough Assembly. I live on Lazy Mountain, not far from here. And uh, quite frankly, I didn't used to visit this area a lot. Everybody knows what some of the stuff that is, is that went on then. And uh, to see the change over time is just, it's absolutely stunning. It is really nothing short of stunning. And all of the people that you've heard from, especially uh, Patty and Kenny Barber, and uh, I know Earl has uh, put some uh, a lot of effort into this. Uh, all the thank yous have already been said, but I want to thank you again, because without the community effort, without the uh, political support, without the borough's involvement, without DNR's involvement, and a lot of people, the, the uh, I know uh, Scott Lapine's group started out here a long time ago. The AK Mudslingers are here now. Um, this is proof that you can have a really neat piece of the woods and the river and the forest to recreate in and do it right. And I, I just take a look at all these trees and think, you know, we get to go out and through these trees to the river, through the woods. And I think that's a really important thing to keep for our future, for our children, for our grandchildren. And <clears throat> like everybody else, I was stunned. The campground, the first day the campground is open, it's already full. How often does that happen? Does that make you feel good? Uh, in addition to all the community commitment and uh, everything that anybody has been doing, the inspiration has already gone from here. Last week, I, I did. I saw Scott and the mudslingers. I picked up a, a bag of bottles and cans, mainly out at Slipper Lake, because they have had some of the same problems that were happening here. And the solution is, is to get buy-in from the people who want to use it and help clean it up. And, and that is nothing short of stunning. So um, the more that we appreciate this area, the more that we clean it up, the less time we'll have to spend gathering trash. And in addition to all of the great things that's going on, I do appreciate former Assemblyman uh, Colligan for 
getting this thing going. It was before I was on the assembly. But in terms of keeping the funding going, it's one of the things we agreed on. So I think it has a great future. So let's get out there and enjoy it, get a little trash. And if we can spend more time picnicking than trash gathering, this is going to continue to be a great place. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. <laughs>